Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show sure did. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Okay. Hey, y'all. This is April. And this is Caroline. Oh, and this is a bonus, bonus breaking news for you. We couldn't not. We couldn't not. Yeah, we had to. We can't wait until Tuesday. So many things might change when you hear Tuesday's episode, but or after you hear this episode. But if you follow our Instagram page, Caroline basically is on the ground in Moscow, Idaho. Pretty she much. knows everything that's going on. Um, mm-hmm. So please follow our Instagram page and our Facebook pages because anything new, I'm pretty sure she reported Barbara Walters died before she was actually <laughs> presumed dead. Do, and, <laughs> and by the way, everybody, apparently these people think that Barbara Walters is Diane Sawyer. Oh, no. Uh, just people out there are saying Barbara Walters died and they're putting pictures of oh, Diane Sawyer Diane, and oh, they're yeah. showing interviews of Diane Sawyer and they're like, please, <laughs> child, that is not Barbara Walters. No. You are too young. So today is um, New Year's Eve for us. We're recording this. You're going to get this really, really, really soon. But on December 30th, this was a busy day in true crime. Was it? A busy. I mean, busy there day. was just a giant arrest made. A giant. Tell them about it. Okay. Well, we have Brian um, Koberger. 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 Brian Christopher Koberger. He is a 28 year old guy. He was a student at Washington State University. He actually was studying. Um, criminal justice and mm-hmm. he was a crim- criminal justice major he had just got his master's ma- he had just yeah got his master's in may on may 22nd may 2022. 2022 and he was starting his phd he had just complete completed his first semester yeah starting his phd so he actually is from pennsylvania well that's where his parents live and that's where he was found mm-hmm. Now, a word from our sponsors. Um, what are we doing here, Rusty? What are we going to do? Uh, yep, we're doing the uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. King of the Hill yes, Rewatch sir. Podcast. Yeah, so we're going to go through one episode at a time. Uh, come along for the ride with us. Come check it out. And, and give me give me a good, um, like, Dale Gribble quote to go out on. Wingo! Yeah, Wingo. <laughs> Wingo. Wingo. All right, well, join us, uh, join us for uh, the uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. In the heart of Texas, that drinks his brew and he spits his chew. Live in the heart of Texas, the TV players, but no one cares. Live in the heart of Texas. Here we go. Frozen, frozen, heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything. And, and basically, I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to 
highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bows Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> bros and bros and heroes. Gonna tell you about bros and bros and heroes. Gonna tell you about. This guy's um, about six feet tall. He's a white guy. He has blue eyes, which they look like blue eyes. Um, dark hair. Um, he has what looks to be maybe a former broken nose. I mean, he has a little crooked. He's a very... I think he's Jewish. Well, no, because I heard Catholic. Yeah, but he's in a Catholic community. Oh, okay. But Burger, even if he's not like a practicing oh. Jewish, I think he comes from... Because usually maybe Burger... he's just Jew. Jewish descent, ish. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> got the nose he's got the look he's got the name that's me stereotyping oh no. i'm jewish too oh yeah me too um he was um he is an obsessive vegan yes and i've heard that from his, what he wouldn't eat at his parents house out of like pots and pans that had previously been used to cook animal food or yeah. something crazy and this like that. isn't this is like his aunt an aunt that used to be married into the family that's yeah coming and forward and talking and apparently the lady who went and interviewed them the aunts neither i guess there was two different aunts that were interviewed and they didn't seem like shocked or surprised at all wow is what she said because they're like what was her demeanor what were their demeanor and they're like mm, just like nothing nothing new mm. like what would you not be shocked? I would be shocked. Yeah. He so he was getting his PhD at Washington State University. He was working on a research project and this was to better understand people's emotions, what they were thinking and the decision making uh, as they were commi committing a crime. So he went and posted this um thing on Reddit and what that's basically was Asking for people who are 18 years and older and if, like, they were previously convicted of a crime. And he was wanting these people to, like, come forward if they had never been caught and, the, and they could keep it anonymous. Answer this survey. Here, I'm going to, can I read this, yeah. what it has? Yeah. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm inviting you to participate in a research project that seeks to understand how emotions and psychological traits influence decision making when committing a crime. In particular, this study seeks to understand the story behind your most recent criminal offense with an emphasis on your thoughts and feelings throughout your experience. In the event that your most recent offense was not one that led to a conviction, you may still participate. Additional surveys are included after the open-ended section as to, the, to best understand your unique traits. The study should take about 15 to 20 minutes to fully complete. Um, it's just saying that it's all confidential. Be 18 or older. If you want to participate, you can terminate your participation at any time. He does have his email. This was when he was at DeSala. So this was for his graduate master's program. It was over like 200 days ago when you saw that this was posted. Mm -hmm. So... I have to think that, like, maybe this this could have been just for planning. You know, every well, every graduate program you have to take a research like class, mm -hmm. or is this like a thesis to graduate? So this paper is probably done and completed, and I'm sure it's part of the investigation. Oh, right now. yeah. Well, so did you see the questions? Yeah. Okay. okay. So here are the. Because here I have, is, are these the same ones? At the time of the crime, please indicate the following. Were you employed? Yes or no. Were you under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Yes or no. Or were you experiencing any issues with your family? Yes or no. Were you affiliated with a gang? Yes or no. Was your first offense, was this your first defense, offense? Yes or no. Did you struggle with or fight the victim? Yes or no. And then open-ended questions is, did you prepare for the crime before leaving your home? 
please detail what you were thinking and feeling at this point. How did you travel to um, and enter the location at which your crime occurred? Three, before making your move, how did you approach the victim or target? Please detail what you were thinking and feeling. Four, what was the mo the first movie, no, first move made in order to accomplish your goal? Please detail any thoughts and feelings at this point. Before leaving, is there anything else you did? Six, how did you leave the scene? Seven, after committing the crime, what were you thinking and feeling? Anything you have? Uh, why did you choose that victim or target over others? Um, and did you commit the crime alone? Yes and or no. And if no, how many people were involved? Did you say after arriving, what steps did you take to lo- locating the victim or target? Please detail your thoughts and feelings. I don't remember. Okay, well, so these are the questions that were from this little survey thing. That's a little suspicious. Um, so that's interesting. They're all great questions I would want to ask any convict, right? But then you have to wonder, or anybody who committed a crime, but then you have to wonder, was, was he trying to recruit some help? Or was he trying to learn from their mistakes? What was he doing here? I, I think both. Yeah. He went, maybe he wanted to get somebody to help him who knew what they were doing, yeah. and this was his way of figuring it out. Um, so he lives in Pullman, Washington. That's where it is, which is about um, 21 minutes away from the murder scene, 11 miles, something like mm-hmm. that. It's pretty, pretty close. Um, and I thought it was interesting that this kid, this, this guy, drove off to – so, I mean, he drove from – where he lived in Washington to all the way across the country to Pennsylvania, which was like 2,500 miles, I guess. Um, And that's where they found that white Elantra. But would he have gone home anyways? It's a holiday break. Well, so was he even running? Because they talked about him coming to class. Because remember, this happened. Yeah, he finished out. He finished yeah. out the semester. So he stayed around. He didn't immediately. I leave. think he left once they started releasing the car. Water launcher yeah. stuff. Yeah, and then he left. And I don't know. We don't know the details of how everything happened, which hopefully we'll find out in the next couple of days. But um, I thought it was interesting because it's like this Brian ran home to his friends, drove across country or ran home to his parents, drove across the country. Brian Laundry ran home to his parents, oh. drove across the country. <laughs> yeah. But never trust a Brian, never trust a Brian. And there's no mention that this guy has a girlfriend or had a love interest or anything. So then you're thinking, is he an incel? Mm-hmm. Um, the Hyundai was found at the Pennsylvania home. Um, and this is like Joe Scott Morgan said, it, it, this could be like a rolling crime scene, the car. Oh. Because you can wash it, you can bleach it, you can do everything you want to, but they can still find blood yeah. in it. And there has to be some blood. There has to be some. I do know that they did find DNA evidence of his that. At the scene. Yes, at the scene. And I'm assuming it's in that car as well. Is that what they said? Cross the cross match DNA at the crime scene. His blood could have been found in a bed as cast off somewhere. Most likely the cops. Okay. Um, we do know that the cops had been following him for about four days mm-hmm. in order to get some kind of his DNA, like go through his trash or get something out of the trash to get his DNA to confirm that it was him. Him. And there's something with the familial DNA that they said they used as well, I guess, in order to get his. Um, okay, then there's this extradition stuff. Yes. Okay, so basically you have to have a – he can waive extradition. If he were to waive it, it's basically like – um. I'm going to Idaho, like, oh, I'm waving it. Take me to Idaho ASAP. If he does not waive it, he's going to, like, fight it. Then he stays in Pennsylvania a little bit longer. I don't know if that happens. I know there's the hearing is on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. This is like a 15-minute hearing. And the hearing basically is to determine that you, 
your name is on the warrant and this is who you are and that's your name. That's basically what this extradition hearing is. Once they, um, once they do this extradition hearing, then they are, they'll be able to release the, all the, all the information, the, um, uh, they'll be able to unseal the yes. arrest warrant and the affidavit. And so we'll be able to see. And that's when we'll know more. I don't know how much more or what, but you'll be able to know that. Also, the there were cleaning crews that were just set up to clean out the house and like biohazard stuff. And they had set up this whole thing. They had the truck against the house. They had it all tarped off and covered up. You, I don't even think they got anything moved out. By the time they had it all, had it all set up, they halted it. Mm-hmm. They paused it. Something about there was a court order to do it to stop the process of searching. I don't know how that. It seems so early to do that, anyways. I don't. I know. I, I think I I did hear somebody say that they maybe will want to preserve the scene. So then, uh, for the trial, if he does say he's not guilty and there is a trial, that maybe they're going to want people to the jury to go in and look at the home. Yes. But why would they even start to clean it then? I don't know. I don't either. I guess maybe the guy, the, the owner, owner of the home, probably was like, "I need my stuff back." Yeah. Um, something else that I noted is that could it have? Uh, okay. Um, uh, let's. I'll get to my um, questions in a second. I did see that you know they were talking to different classmates that were in class with them, and he was very well-spoken, very intelligent, um, very smart, and very, like, I guess, um, involved and talkative, like, during group discussions and during lectures, like, almost, like, trying to prove a point, like, trying Mm -hmm. to prove how smart he is, and then after the murders, they described him as more combative and maybe manic-like. Um, wow. this is just from Nancy Grace just now is talking to some classmates from um, WSU. What do you think about how he looks? Um, like the college cannibal, Austin Harif. He does. Look like <laughs> somebody like says, uh, that looks like eyes. somebody says it looks like somebody you would date. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. And I was like, well, actually probably. Yeah. Cause he's tall and. Yeah, I mean he. T- looks okay, like Pete. he <laughs> <laughs> looks like Dirty Chad. <laughs> I was thinking he looks like a normal, normal everyday guy, like yeah. that you would see at the tailgate. You would see just what, like he doesn't look like. I mean, he's not like face tattooed and piercings everywhere, and has that look. Um, I mean, I have a lot of piercings, so it's fine. Uh. But yeah. he just didn't, he didn't, he wasn't some old fat guy who was like sweaty and gross. Yeah. Um, I mean, he looks a little dorky, but he looked like he was clean cut and he looked like he yeah. had good skin. He has good skin. Yeah. I, thought, I thought he had His good skin. eyes were, um, which it's hereditary in my family too, but like real um, oh, sunken deep eye, in. Eye sockets. Yeah. 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 And, and real dark around the eyes, yeah. which... Yeah. It's common in women who wear makeup all the time, right? We put well, my fa- around like, there. My, um, like my stepmom and her sister, they have really deep mm-hmm. eye sockets like that. But they don't have this. He just had like, he did have a creepy look though. He Like yeah, a sta- he creepy stare. I think there's nothing. Well, I wouldn't pick him out and say, ooh, this kid's a serial killer. This guy's a serial killer. But he does look empty eyed to me. I and think- people say blank stare. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. He doesn't have like so show a lot of socialization skills. There's not like friends and coming out and saying, no, he would never like you're just yeah. nobody's like jump into his defense right now. Uh, I did watch a clip of him graduating. So I saw him walk across. Yeah. His, did you see that? Yeah, yeah. And like the all the people before him are smiling and like, ah, and he just is like. No, no yeah. emotion, no reaction. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Who do you think was targeted? What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. I don't. I, part of me is like, is this part of his? Um, like, did he do this all for an experiment and activity to see if he can just get away with it? <clears throat> Some people are saying this is a very sexually frustrated, like motivated crime. So could it be an incel type person? 
Um, and then, but the other part of me is just, I, you, I need to know what the connection is. Okay. So, you know, they had that Greek, they worked at that Greek restaurant, two of the girls, mad Greek. Okay. Would that be somewhere like where a vegan would go eat a Greek restaurant? I mean, I would okay. So let's say that's how he even like came in contact with them. Cause two of them were waitresses uh-huh. up there. So that could be the connection as far as, like, how he even knew who they were. Maybe he went to eat there a lot. This is all just whatever. Yeah. Um, and then somehow started following them and then found out that Kaylee was about to be moving and wanted to, like, do it before she moved. But one of them had already moved out. She was just there visiting. Kaylee. Yeah. Yeah. But she, she had already moved out. She wasn't even she, living there. Right. And so, But and she'd come back for those, like, just four to days visit. just yeah. to show off her car. Um. I don't know. That could be maybe that's what triggered a t- the timing of it because he knew. I don't. Who knows? He knew. I just think he he had to have been watching them. He had to have been watching the house because I I don't think you just random. I don't think it's random. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, it'll be interesting to see his internet activity, phone activity, because a lot of people are saying that they've seen this TikTok video that he, they thought he posted describing everything, which I think it's him. And then on the Facebook page, that is the University of Idaho Discussion Case Facebook page, um, there's this guy named um, Papa... Shit, what's it called? There's this guy who was posting all these weird, like, posts, just asking all these, like, odd questions. Um, Do you think he only had one? Do you think there was only one weapon involved? Do you think that... uh, like, why do you think, do you think he did it alone? Do you think this? Oh, how about that? I mean, and it was just really weird questions, and he would just post all the time, and they kind of, now that account has been deactivated, so they think that he was Might have been him. following that page, like, the whole time, just, like, being super involved. I'd like to know, like, because I'm sure, or what usually happens is you they had the memorial for them, right? And, you know, a lot of people, they'll oh, they're having back. it. They're having it to, like, this weekend. Well, they, they had, had a vigil. They had the vigil. Yeah, vigil yeah, yeah, on yeah, campus. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of times they'll, um, the person will return to the scene, especially if they're local. And so you have somebody's job is to take pictures of everybody who's there. And so oh, now I they want, have yeah. a face to go back and look through the pictures yeah. to see if he did attend um, the vigil. There's also a bunch of other, like, just fake accounts going up, like, Oh, look, he's friends. People are saying, look, he's been following Kaylee oh. for this long. But know, yeah, the heard, account was just no, created. Those all, those all, all those Instagram accounts are all fake accounts. Yeah. This other stuff, though, like this video that he had posted, we think he had posted, that was posted a while back. And these, all these, um, Papa Roger is what his name was. And it goes back to like the early December where it's just, I'll send it to you. It's just. And I'll post it on the page or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's just very interesting. Um, I do love the fact that um, Santa is putting uh, putting in work on his off time. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> yeah. The, what was he? The DA or the he's prosecutor the prosecutor who looks like literally like Santa Claus, <laughs> and he obviously knows who's on the naughty list. Yeah. I just remember Santa sending someone to death row. Oh, and death there there is the death penalty, death penalty in Idaho. State, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just remember on Christmas, like, cause I got a college kid. My kids at home, you know, making me so happy and then driving me crazy. And I remember thinking about all these parents and this is like the happiest time of the year, especially when your kids come back home from college. And I remember saying a special prayer on Christmas, like, and I said like, man, Jesus, it'd be great to give these parents some answers. Like that'd be a great Christmas present for them. And then turns out they were like doing a stakeout, like by that night or the next day. Mm -hmm. I also love how they, um, were it happened around 3 a.m. when the police actually went to the house and did so, their yeah, arrest like it was this whole SWAT team situation yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but at like 3 a.m. at the time that he invaded right right I've heard one and I've heard house. three but I do know Different that either times. way he was it was it was enough to it was had to have been like very alarming yeah 
and shocking and unexpected. And I've I love seen it. nothing about the parent. Like I don't see. By this time, we knew what Brian Laundry's parents looked like. like oh, people. I know. Brian Enton went to the house, rang the doorbell. I, but it was dark, right? Yeah. That, well, they turned off the light. Okay. On him, so they're there. I'm just surprised that I just haven't seen more of them. Yeah. Um, oh, and th- and then I did see that the so the parents live in a gated community. Mm-hmm. Earlier, I saw on t- on Twitter that there's like an hour and a half long line outside of their home like outside of their gated community just wow waiting to just go and yeah, yeah yeah somebody's trying to get the first picture of him i get you know i mean i oh whenever they release this unsealed thing it's gonna be i'm just grateful there's answers for the family they're not going into 2023 wondering if this will ever be solved do you think that do, what do you think the motive was and do you where do you think the weapon is I don't know. I don't know. Um, part of me wants to say, like, je- oh, jealousy also and sexually they- frustrated, but the other part of me is, like, power control just to see if he can get away with it. Yeah, I think he just wanted to do it for his research project. Yeah. And Maybe they- that was his Ph.D. dissertation. Yeah, and they spent 12 hours at his apartment in Pullman in Washington, um, and they came up with, like, all these boxes and bags and all kinds of stuff. So they are, like, scouring that place. Yeah. So they probably do have, if he did these, so on this TikTok video I'm talking about, he actually had written out all these details and he was reading a paper as he was, like, posting. Yeah. So he most likely, I mean, if he's, like, a research person and, like, a studious, yeah. sm- I mean, he probably has, like, notes and stuff all over the oh, place. Oh, yeah. And probably his knives. And he, one of the things he asked on the Facebook page was, do you think that he only had one knife? Do you think that he considered if that knife would have broken, he would have brought a backup knife? Mm-hmm. Do you think that he used a stun gun to subdue anybody? I mean, these are all those questions that Papa, whatever is Papa Daddy, Papa Roger mm-hmm. was asking all the, on this Facebook group. How creepy is that? Yeah, but they haven't found the murder weapon, so they're looking for that. Right. But they won't need it. If they don't find it, they won't need it to do any to convict him it'll just help i mean i'm changing everything you're guilty until proven innocent <laughs> so, guilty. Sorry. oh <sighs> goodness i can't believe it i love it this is this is um this is great yeah it That's... took our day yesterday i don't know how many videos and things that i watched let's say the victims names again uh we have um kaylee gonsalves Santa, Kernoodle, Ke- Ethan, Maddie, Maddie, Mogan, and Ethan Chapin, and Ethan Chapin. Yes, not closure, but it's just a little bit step in the right direction towards a little bit of peace for these. Yes, families. it is. It is. It's just to have a face and just to have a. I mean, and it's nobody who we nobody who even was remotely nobody would have known about. Oh, yeah. No Jack, no Jake, no Joe, no John, well, whoever, all these all the Jacks people that and they Jakes. were accusing. And this damn TikTok lady. Have you seen that TikTok lady? She's like a tarot card reader. She's trying to blame everything on a professor at University of Idaho oh. saying that this lady professor did it because she was having a secret relationship with Kay- Kylie. Oh, Kaylee. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, and she's I, being sued for defamation. She should. Yes, because she's an idiot. So. She should. Um, I don't. I didn't think that we were gonna get somebody in and think, "Ooh, yeah, that's a killer." Like they never really looked like a killer. Dahmer didn't look like a killer. Bundy didn't look like a killer. They never really, unless it's your um, Nico Jenkins, like and Pazuzu, they looked like they could have been killers. Yeah, but you never. What you think you picture a big scary. Stranger yeah. danger yeah. person. Yeah. It's never that. No. And that's why they got rid of stranger danger because it's usually somebody that looks very Oh, trustworthy. is that really? Yeah. They got rid of stranger danger because it made kids think that only strangers could be the ones that hurt you. But it's really people that you know and trust yeah. your preachers, your teachers, your family members, your friends. So stranger danger like we did away with that a long time ago because it sent the wrong message. And then and then if you remember Stranger Danger, it was like a guy in this black hooded like robe 
almost like the Grim Reaper yeah. type thing. Yeah. So it made it even seem scary. That's not how strangers going to look. Somebody who's going to abduct you is going to look. They're going to be good looking. They're probably going to be smart. They're we knew it was going to be a white male. Like we, yeah, because you I typically maybe don't. Maybe it could have been a white female. Like there could have been a chance, but you we typically knew it was going to be a white male. Hill with a, outside your race. Mm-hmm. And um, it had you were thinking an older, more um, mm-hmm. like withdrawn guy. He was a little bit older, but he was more in their age range. Well, I was thinking not. Was I thinking not a college? I didn't think he was a college student. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, 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 thank you to everybody who was tagging us in all these different articles and letting us know. Um, if anything comes across, feel free to continue yeah, to email, tag us. Email us or tag us. Keep sending us stuff. Anything you see, you might see it before us. And so we always try to put the latest out there. Yep. And we will see y'all for our regular episodes. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye, y'all. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.